Okay. So today, what I want to talk about is um, is uh, let no one deceive you. When we when we go in this area, what we find is that man um, does some things, and he 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 does these things because he is making a pattern of something else. But you, you always hear the scripture: uh, those who are spiritually inclined, they when they speak, they say. When they're going to bring things about things going on in the earth, they said they'll say, "Okay, so Moshe and the priesthood of that time, something like that, after the flesh, said this, this, and this, or they did X, Y, Z, right? Well, they did X, Y, Z, and they said certain things, and they did certain um, rituals that was according to physical things. Well, heavenly things are not the same. They're, you know, the physical things are patterns of the heavenly things. And so when you come into, when you come into the, the physical things, uh, we have to remember that we have to understand that these things that you do physically, you, 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 you're going to understand spiritual things by how you carry them out on this planet. But when you ascend to what you were before, you're not physical, so therefore those things are on a different, you're on a different level. You know, it's, it's like on a mirrored, a mirrored side of things. So, you know, when you look in the mirror, you'll see your, your left hand will be on your right hand side looking back at you. And that's how the mirror is. So this, this pattern that you look from heaven coming to earth, it has the same kind of twist in certain things like a like a like a mirror. So now, so where I'm going with this is something that Yahshua said way back, and and we're going to go to that scripture um, in in Matthew uh, chapter 24. Well, Yahshua here told you. He says, okay, listen. He says when they say he's over here or he's over there, he's telling you. He says. Make sure that you don't go for that. Make sure you don't go for anything that's telling you that this man that who's going to save you or this group that's going to save you or whatever the case is that is in a certain place because this is not how Yahweh works, period. That's not how he works. Okay. Our scripture tells us that you have to work out your salvation. You can't go to a group to do it. Israel, because there was a nation, they can't. They just can't be saying, "Okay, we're Israel and we got it all." No, that's why. Uh, just because you know, Yahshua told them, just because they were of Abraham's seed, doesn't mean that they had any special coins ready to to get to where they need, where where they had to get to to get back home. Abraham's bloodline wasn't doing anything. However, a spirit moving through that bloodline was going to do it all. And it, you, we have to go to spirit. we got to step off everything that's being done in flesh because everything that's being done in flesh is coming down from a pattern that is in the heavens. Yes, we have to bring it down into the earth and get certain things here. So Moshe had the children of Israel put together records, and all the nations did that. They did, they did records because that's the only way they are going to remember what happened generations that passed by. That's the only way they're going to remember. So when they put those things in their books or their chronicles, this is how these things carry on to the next generation. And even in, in that very same generation, because the human, the human mind or the brain is only going to retain a certain amount and people are going to forget things. Well, when you return to who you were, that's out of the window. No one needs to worry about that because the records are kept. You know, you, you know, just as as you have an autonomic um, nervous system that's doing certain things, and you don't even just have to worry about being conscious about it. So you have the records going on because you have things with, within yourself that's recording. Even your blood cells, they're recording. What's going on with all the things that's in your body? They're recording this. And all this recording that's going on in your Bible, this is considered a book. Okay? It's all it's considered. It's, it's considered a book because that's how you write things in. Well, you have records in the universe. You have records of your soul. And these are called Akashics. And these Akashics are simply books. 
things that are written, but it's just like your system recording things that's going on, but it's in spirit. Yahweh doesn't need a man or, or, or people or governments to record for him because these books are already in your soul, and at a certain time you are going to wake up to the book. And when, and when the scripture says, and the books were open, it's opening right in the individual. And the individual where the books open at, that individual is going to know what they need to fix and or if, they, if they're going to be accepted, whatever the case is. The soul knows. The soul knows these things. Now, in, um, in chapter 24 and verse 4 of uh, Matthew, let's go to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4, um, Yahshua here says, he says, no, no, let's go to verse 3 first. He says, now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, okay, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Now the end of the age is going to be with a harvest. Okay, and the sign of his coming is going to be with a harvest. No matter which way you're going to look at it, okay, if it's going to be the time that he comes for his, that's a time of a restoration. And if we're, if we're looking at that as, okay, when is the end of the whole age that all these three uh, um, restorations are in, uh, if we look at that in, in, in that manner, well, it's talking about something that goes after the wheat uh, has come, but it could just be it just could be the restoration of this particular time period right here that we're looking at, okay? Because there's like uh, three ages in, inside of one age. So he, so so now Yahshua answered and said to them, "Be on guard." This is very important, so that no man deceives you. No man, because guess who you're going to be deceived by, if anything. You're going to be deceived by people who you're open to to listen to. Okay? That's what you're going to be deceived by. And so when, when you're going to look at something, as I've always told you, make sure that it pans out with the word of Yahweh. He, whatever someone says that's not against what Yahweh says, hey, just because you haven't heard about it before doesn't mean that it's not so. Because if it's not against Yahweh, Yahshua says, whoever is not against me is for me. But when you search the word of Yahweh and, it's, and, and you find that it's not so, you know, it may, it may still be something that you don't really understand, but it's something that you're not going to swallow. Okay? So for those things, you're going to put it on the shelf until you get more understanding of that. This is why Yahweh lets you know, don't leave the written word of the law until he has give you, given you confirmation spiritually. And Yahshua is the one that's going to give that to you in spirit because he told you and I to look for Yahshua. When Yahshua starts telling you and showing you how the scriptures that Moshe was writing or Moshe, uh, um, his steward wrote on his behalf, shows you where it goes in spiritual form and what the intentions of Moshe is all about, then you step off Moshe. If he doesn't show you, hey, the best thing to do is stay on what Moshe said because Moshe is the schoolmaster. <clears throat> He's the schoolmaster that's pointing the way for you and I to get to something else that we're going to hitch onto that's going to get us home. It's like a hitchhiking and getting us on the right plane to get back home. So make sure that no man, because man is going to be what's being used to, to deceive you. So it says right here, Many will come, this book says against my name, and some of the book says in my name. It doesn't really matter how you look at it, because if they come in the name and they were in sin, they're coming against his characteristics anyway. So it, that doesn't really matter. Okay? And that person is going to say, or, or, or those individuals are going to say, I am anointed or appointed by what they're saying to preach that folks uh, come through me. Now, this is the very same issue that we fell for in the garden because there was a Luciferian rebellion that wanted to move something in a different direction and it convinced us, okay, to go a different way. And the woman said, the serpent, because the serpent is so subtle, okay, more subtle than any other beast of the field that Yahweh had created, 
that serpent deceived me. So you, we're, we're most likely to start believing something that someone says, whether it's written in a book, whether they could tell us this th these things, and they show it to us from their point of view. That's all great, because they may be right. And they may be right in some things and not be right in other things, but you and I need to take it to what the Father said for confirmation. Be just like the Bereans, accept the word, but then go just search it out to see if those things are actually what it is because we may be getting deceived. Okay. So now, um, it goes on here. So they're going to deceive many. And of course, you're going to hear about the wars and wars and the rumors of wars. So now, let's go over to verse 11. So now it says here now, and many false prophets or leaders will rise and will deceive many, doing the very same thing that the Luciferian rebellion did, pulling people off the power of Yahweh, which is in them, for them to start holding on to their word. So it's almost like what our, our government does. Our government gives us all these um, uh, privileges, but in order to get the privileges that they afford us, they want us to give up the rights. The same thing happened with the prodigal son. In order for the prodigal son to go into the, the, the place that he was going to go into, or he was leaving to go into, and to function as those individuals there, he had to give up certain things that he had with the father. Okay? He has to give up certain powers to function in there. Well, when the adversary sends someone to you, the adversary is not sending someone to you for you to receive power. It's, it's, it's sending someone to you to bind you. To bind you so you could be robbed of what you already have within your person. This is what we have to build up, what we already have. We have to get to the point that we remember everything that is there to remember that we can remember while we're in this flesh. This is what, this, this is your quest. This is your quest. Why in here? No one needs to write a book for you so you go into the kingdom for them or with them. Now, if you have a society, now, that society now, on its own, because that society can't determine who is going to go into the, to the heavens or not. That's Yahweh. That society can't write the book for heaven. Yahweh writes the books. Okay? Yahweh writes the books, and the, and the books that are written, it's, it's going to be in, in DNA form or on Akashic form, period, because you have it. So, so a society in, in the earth, such as the Medper society, so, such as the, the Hebrew society, or the Babylonian society, or our society, they, can, they could write a book for their society, and they could say, okay, these are who could come in our society, and who cannot. These are who could be citizens amongst us, and who cannot. Okay, so here comes Yahshua ben Nun. And Yahshua ben Nun says, okay, you go and worship the, the gods on the other side of the Euphrates and deal with those societies. Okay? But for me, or this society that, I'm, that Yahweh has given me here, we're going to do what Yahweh said. So if you're going to come here, he's saying, you got to follow the rules of this society. But he doesn't have say as far as what Yahweh is going to allow before himself or not. He doesn't have that say. None of us have that say. Okay? Now, you remember the apostles at one time, some guy was um, preaching. As the apostles went out, Yahshua had sent them out, and some guy was preaching. But he was not amongst the apostles. He wasn't with their society. He wasn't with their nation, or whatever the case, according to the flesh. But Yahshua knew the deal. And the apostles were so gung-ho that they forbid that man from doing the work that Yahweh put within him to do separately from the apostles. But the apostles didn't know. And it's okay not to know. But when you find out, 
then it's time to fix something because then we're actually fixing the ego and all those, those distortions that we have when we find out we need to fix all those distortions. So th that individual now couldn't do what he was given the right to do or, or, give, or given instructions to do by on high. But Yahshua knew. And Yahshua, Yahshua said to them after they told him, hey, listen, don't forbid it. If that man is not speaking against the things that I am teaching you guys, hey, let him do the work along with you guys. Don't stop him from doing anything because he's been given authority to do the very same things that you're doing. Okay? The son is in that individual and doing certain things, and the son is in me, and I have authority to give you, and because I've given you, you have the authority to go out there and, and, and remove this demon and cast out, cast out devils and all the things and put your hands upon people, whatever the case is. But if someone else is doing that, why would you forbid him? You know? If he's injuring folks, forbid him. But if he's doing what, what's not against me, why forbid him? So we have to um, be careful in that sense of folks who may come in that manner because, it, you know, the apostles... They were kind of overly gung-ho here. They believed in what Yahshua had to say. And they weren't going to listen to anybody else, period, but Yahshua, the man that was there. And so gung-ho that they would open, allow them, their minds to be open to hear anybody else. So Yahshua is telling them, listen, you could hear what somebody else is saying because they may have something to say to you that is true. So, if he's not moving you against what I'm saying, hey, we're saying the same thing. We're saying the same thing. Just because you don't know it don't mean that it's not the case. Okay, so, so now, so he goes on a little further here now, okay, and um, he says, because iniquity and transgression of what Yahweh has given us to do because that will abound, the love of many is going to grow cold. And what's the love of many, guys? The love, if you love me, keep my commandments. Isn't that what it says? Okay, so do what Yahweh said. Because of the iniquity that's going to be there, because of that, people are going to stray from the word of Yahweh. And their love, their obedience to Yahweh, that's going to become cold. However, he says now, but he, he, he who endures to the end, the same will be saved. No, not the one who follows somebody over there. If you personally endure what Yahweh has to say, you, Yahweh says, you're going to be saved. You are going to be redeemed. Okay? Just like the Zadok priesthood in Yekitska, they're the only ones who didn't go astray when the rest of the children of Israel went astray, okay, following after somebody over there or another family, okay, that Yahweh already said, listen, he's not over there or he's not over there because he's in you. He is in you and Yahweh has given you guidance of how to wake the kingdom up in you and for you and I to see the will of the Father that he has already put in you. We have walked away from that and we are the ones who are responsible for waking that back up. Okay, now we have help and we have a guidance but we have to do the work because it has to be something that's done by our own free will. And once we get that done, hey, we're going to have it. Okay, so now, um, so now let's go over to um, to to First John. Okay, First John. Okay, First uh, John chapter three, <laughs> and we're gonna look at that a little bit. First John chapter three, and let's look at um, verse seven. First John chapter three and verse seven. Okay. Little children, speaking about us, the ones who are young, okay, the ones who are impressionable, the ones who haven't seen everything yet because they haven't experienced things. So individuals who come from higher levels of consciousness or someone who has information that we haven't heard 
It may woo us. And we may want to run in that direction. Okay, so little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Period. Period. You practice it, you're righteous. You don't need someone to put you on their chronicle, chronological books to say whether you're there or not. You don't need that. Just as he who gave everything to you, who does only what he sees and hears from his father, just as he is righteous. Okay? And he who goes in the other direction, hey, guess what? He's in the other direction. That's all that it is to that. If we can look at it. Okay, so now let's go over to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, and let's look at, let's go to verse 5. Okay? So he says here, For know this, that no whoremonger, unclean person, no covetous man, who are idolaters, have an inheritance in the kingdom of Messiah. They can be part of the government and Yahweh. So he's telling you who can't go. Now, I certainly don't know all adulterers because that's in their hearts. Yahshua knew what was going on with God Iscariot. He knew him because Yahshua could discern the hearts. Now, I can't discern the hearts like, 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 like he can, but all of us have something in us that we know when we get around certain things, there's an uneasy feeling about something, and if we're in tune enough, we know we don't, we don't want to go in that direction. Okay? Here he's telling us about these folks who can't go in. But it's not for us to determine that because the Father already knows, just as Yahshua knew who about, about God Iscariot. Just as Yahshua knew at the well that that woman had done certain things, he wasn't following her on. No, but the book is in him. The book is there. It's written. So he knows he could read that record. Okay? The books were open in that man, and he could read the record. Say, okay, you've been with the man who you with now is not even your husband, and you have 15,000 other ones. He could say that because he knew. He read her. Okay, so now he goes here in verse 6. Let no man deceive you by letting you think otherwise. Because you can't go as a group somewhere or go follow somebody and get in. No. You could join a society that will help you to do certain things. But in that society, everybody probably more than likely will have some kind of issue in there, other people, that they have to work out. And in that society, it will have to be determined on the individuals who overcome or endure, just as the children of Israel. Children of Israel, same thing. They got a society, okay, and they were deceived into thinking that they had props more than anybody else. No, that's not the case. They still had to do what Yahweh said, or they wouldn't enter it. So here we go now. So don't let them deceive you of anything otherwise. For because of these things, the wrath of Yahweh comes upon the children of disobedience. Therefore, don't be partakers with them. Don't go do what they say. Stay away from the things that they do so you won't inherit the plagues that comes upon them. Okay. So now, we're going to go over to Corinthians. We're going to, speak, you know, we're going to see a little bit more on that. Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and let's look at verse 18. 3 and verse 18. Okay? It says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you think he is wise by the standard of this world, or just, just wise, period, let him become a fool that he may become wise. Let him admit that he don't know everything. So he can become wise. Because then he'll leave, leave, he'll leave room for something to get in there and show him what the real deal is. He has to leave it open. Just because he don't feel right about around someone because, or he's, he's afraid that this man is going to show something that, 
that he don't know yet, and he want to look good in front of um, his people, because of that, he can't. If he just goes ahead and and stays on that and and fight against everything that comes, he's not going to be able to have the opening. He's going to close himself off to whatever else is coming. Now, if he sees something in somebody else or whatever, and in the scripture he says, he says, okay, don't do so and so, and that's where Yahweh has brought him to, then yes, because Yahweh is going to account that as his righteousness, period. But if he has seen past that, and Yahweh has shown him what Yahshua is saying, and he still doesn't do it, well, he has nothing to cover him then. As Yahshua would say, now you have no cloak. Nothing is there to cover you at that time, because we have to do what we see and hear coming from Yahweh. And Yahweh would have brought that to me, or whoever, and I would, not, and I would be denying him. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're going to go to Daniel, uh, Daniel uh, chapter 8. Okay. Now, these things have to come in our time. Because it tells you, hey, at a certain time, okay, the love for many is going to grow cold, these deceivers are going to come out, and they're going to direct people away from what Yahweh is saying, and many are going to be deceived by this. Many are going to get caught up. Okay, so now, in, in Daniel chapter 8, in verse 23, it says here, And in the last days of their kingdom, when the transgression had reached their fullness, the king of fierce expression and understanding dark sentences and skilled in trickery, that, that's going to stand up. A king. But a king doesn't have to be a person necessarily. A king could be a kingdom. Okay? But what I want you to know is this. The kingdom has to be led by somebody or somebody's, but he will have somebody over it, and that person is going to be receiving information from a heavenly source. Every last one of us is like that. You're going to receive something. Now, in the last days, we know from Revelations that, hey, there is going to be this, 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 uh, these three demons, or, you know, like frogs, who go to the false prophet, False prophet takes things to the kings of the earth. Of course, the kings of the earth has power over all the subjects in the kingdom. And they are going to create great deception at that time. Okay, so he goes now. And his power will be mighty, but not of his own power. And he will destroy astoundingly. And it will succeed and practice and will destroy the mighty and the holy people. Don't look at this as just physically taking somebody out. Destruction comes most effectively when I control your will and you chase after that which I have put before you as your will. I don't have to come and kill you then because you're going to help me to fix and create the environment that I want. I'm going to take your children and you're going to allow them to be institutionalized by my doctrine in school or child care or college, whatever the case is, and I'm going to teach them how to go against that which the Father says. This is great trickery and deceit. If I'm coming to just kill somebody, that ain't no trickery. No, this is something that is, is like the serpent. The serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field. Trick. That's tricks of the sleeves. Trickery. And understanding dark sin is how to get to your mind to cause you and I to start moving in another direction from what we were told. Yahweh's not going to remove that because Yahweh knows he's going to extract those who will stay on board to do what he says from that. So he's going to bring great tribulation through those areas or great temptations and the strong he's going to take out. In this resurrection 
or restoration that's unto Yahshua. And they call this here, they call it the first resurrection in the Bible. And they say in the first resurrection, there's no need to have to go through the second death. They don't have a second death. Blessed are those who have part in the first resurrection because they, they ain't got to do a second death. Well, the first resurrection is actually the second resurrection. The first resurrection simply is the restoration unto Yahshua. But Yahshua was the first one. First one to be resurrected or redeemed or restored that had fallen to, death, to the dead. Those who are going to be hit at his coming are going to be restored unto him. Your Bible calls that the first resurrection. So, so we got that. Okay, so now, so something is happening here that's going to cause many to be deceived. And your father's not going to move that. And there are spirits that's going to move around, around trying to get men to be taken off from what Yahweh said for them not to be able to realize the power that's innate in them already, innately in them, and it's going to be clinging to individuals who are going to say, listen, I am anointed to get salvation here. And they're going to cling to somebody else and, and lose the opportunity to, to look within themselves. They're going to lose it. Now, like I said, it's great to get into a society that you have all people like this. Because when two or three of those individuals are gathered together, it's most powerful. Moshe didn't have those issues. Moshe wanted the children of Israel to prophesy. Because his job would be easier. When, 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 his, when his steward went to him and said, hey, hey, Moshe, these folks back here prophesying, he said, I would that all of y'all did. Don't be jealous for my sake. I hope they all did, because if they did, it'd be easier for me. I wouldn't have to be going through this childbirth with these people. Because they would have realized that there's something within them that would have woken them up, and the whole congregation would have been doing it, and they would have they, they wouldn't have had all the issues that, that, that Moshe would have had to say, listen, uh, someone is coming down the line. Uh, that's the one you need to listen to. Okay, because all right now, all I'm showing you is all the symbols and showing you the patterns of certain things. But this one is the one you're going to have to hitch on to because he's going to take you through the gate if you do what he says. Okay? If you listen to what that man says, the way to get through is going to be awakened in you. That's why Yahshua said, you know the way to his apostles. You do. Okay? You don't need someone to write a book to say you are going to be let in because they, they wrote, they wrote a, a book of remembrance or whatever for you. You don't need that. It's going to be, it's going to be awakening you. Okay. So he goes now, Deuteronomy 13, let's go to Deuteronomy 13. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 13, let's look at uh, verse 1. If there arises among you a prophet or one who foretells by dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder he spoke to you comes to pass, that's great. But, 180, he says, let us follow after this doctrine which you have not known. Yahweh hasn't opened your eyes to that yet. And let us serve them. Hey, he's over there. Okay? Unless you go in there, you're not going to be able to get into the kingdom. Well, the kingdom is in you. You are the house. Okay? You're the temple. And in the temple is the record. Or the records are in the temple. But you have to now find your way to wash your feet. Make the sacrifices, okay? Before you enter into the gate, make the sacrifices. Wash your feet. Go up the steps. Go into the, mo go into the holy place, okay? Deal with everything that's taking place in the holy place because in there, there's light, right? There's also food on the, sh on the, on the showbread table. Okay? And there is 
the connection with the Father, which is through Spirit, which they said the, the, the incense, the altar of incense, which he says are the prayers of the saints, the requests. In there, you have all that. And the Father hears your prayer. The only time he's not going to hear it, he closes it off according to the scripture, is when you decide to do something else, that he says even your prayers are abominations. But it's what you put, whatever you put out. What are you putting out to the Father? This is where we are. What are we putting out to the Father? So here goes that. He says in verse 3, You must not listen to the words of that prophet or the, that foreteller of dreams, for Yahweh your father is testing you. What's happening here? What's happening? He's telling you what he's doing. If this one comes to you and he's telling you something, you can't find it in the word of Yahweh and you go anyway, you fail the test. I would too. Anybody would. He is testing you to know whether you are going to obey him with all that you have or not. All your heart, soul, and might or not. He is testing you. That's all that's coming to. He is the one that's going to be testing you here. Okay? Now, <clears throat> there are many books that's written. We're going to go and look at some of these books. Okay? Let's go to Esther. Are we going to see this? Okay, so Esther is what we got here with Hadassah. Okay, so now when we look at these records, we're going to see something. Everybody had a record. All these different nations, they had their own records. And they wrote in those things according to what you call the flesh. Okay? So he goes now in Esther chapter, or Hadassah chapter 2. Um, this is in verse 23. When an investigation was made into the matters and the plot was confirmed, both, them, both uh, of them were hanged on the gallows. This matter was recorded in the book of the Chronicles in the presence of the king. Notice, in the presence of the king. Those who could, co who could come before the king. So something was written in the book. So other generations coming later on, or if they need to go make reference, because of the feebleness of the man, of man's mind, here you had something written in the book. Okay? Okay, let's go to chapter 6. Okay, chapter 6. Look at verse 1. That night the king had, was unable to sleep, so he gave orders to bring the record book of the chronicles of the king's reign, and they were read in the king's presence. And it was found, recorded there, that Mordecai had given information about um, Bigthan and to uh, Teresh exposing the plot of the doorkeepers to assassinate King Xerxes. Then the king asked what honor and recognition had been bestowed upon Mordecai for this. See, he's going back to look at something and he found something that was written that he had forgotten because of the minds that we have. Okay? We're subject to that in, the, in this third dimensional world. This is part of third dimensional issues. It's natural. The king's official, um, the king's official who attended him replied, nothing has been done for him. So he can a nice little deal uh, gift for uh, Mordecai. Okay, so let's go to, in the same book to chapter 10. Okay, in verse 2. So it says, Now all these events of his power and his achievements, together with a full account of the influence of Mordecai, to which the king advanced him, 
are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Media, Media and Persia? They're all written. That's where they are. Okay? These things are there. So now, we're going to go here now. So we, we remember, in the book that we have here, there's the book of Chronicles. The Hebrews had their own Chronicles. Okay? And they recorded in their Chronicles who was born to who. They're not the only nation that did that. Every nation did that according to the flesh. Do you think you need that for, to be accepted into the, the place you came from? Of course not. Now, Yahweh has a book already. The, book, the scriptures tell us that. Okay? And when it's talking about a, a book, it's just talking about records. But these records are you know, Yahweh's spirit. Right? So, let's go to Exodus. Yahweh's spirit. Does he need to write in the book? Does he, write, does he need to write down anything about you and I in a book according to the flesh, a physical book? Chapter 32. This is in verse 32. Yet now I pray, forgive their sins. But if not, then blot me out of your book, which you have written. How does a spirit write a book? It's, uh, it's something that is recorded just as you have certain cells within your body that's, that records in the same manner and you don't even know what's happening. Yahweh is conscious of everything that's going on and there's a book already being recorded, written. But he ain't got to go do the thing with the fingers. It's already been written. Okay? And when you and I get to the point that we need to, guess what? We're going to have access to that book. Because we go home. Whatever the Father has, it's yours. So you have, you have remembrance of the book. Now let's go to Psalms chapter 58. Psalms chapter 58. I'm sorry, Psalms chapter 56. Okay, now here goes this now. And look at verse 8. So it says here now, write down our lament yourself. List our tears on a parchment, our hardships on, uh, on your book or in your book. This is the book of remembrance that's, being, that's, that's here now, that's talking about, because this is something, it's saying, write down the things that we're doing. Everything is going to be, it's being recorded. And this is what David is saying now, write this down on a parchment. Do you think a spirit is going to write certain things down on a parchment? Oh, do you think so? No, it's not going to happen that way. Okay, let's go to chapter 69. Okay, chapter 69. Okay. In verse 27. Add iniquity to their iniquity. Let them not come into your righteousness or into the rest which your, the righteousness brings. May they be blotted out of the book of life. You think I need to write that book? No. And not be written with the righteous. Who's going to write the book of the righteous? Do you think just because I am of the bloodline of Israel, that what Israel wrote as their chron in their chronicle, logical stuff to see who is part of Israel, that that's the only reason, way I could get in? No. That's the only way I could get back into their society, but that has nothing to do with the family and going back home. It has nothing to do with the souls. So they could say, Israel could say, no, I didn't find you in the book. But Yahweh is not leaving that over to any man because it's already recorded. It's already recorded. Let's go to Daniel, chapter 7. 
Daniel chapter 7 and verse 10. 7 and verse 10. Okay. A fire stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered to him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. Okay. This is not necessarily talking about me and you. Okay? This is not necessarily talking about you and I. It's talking about those who are in the presence of Yahweh. Okay, so here goes now. The judgment was set. Or the judgment is set. The books were opened. The book of life, the book of remembrance, is opened. Okay? I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which this foreign spoke. I beheld the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flames. So here goes the books that's, that's open and Daniel now is seeing because in what Daniel could see because the books opened in him. Gabriel came to show him something and guess what he opened? The books in Daniel. And he showed Daniel something that was to come. Just as Yahshua said, if you do what he says, you're going to have remembrance. And he'll show you things to come. Out of the same book. That's within you. It's already in you. No one needs to write you into going into the kingdom. No one needs to do that. Chapter 12 of Daniel, the same book. Okay. So he goes down, and at that time will Ma Michael or Micaiah stand up the great ruler who stands for the children of your people, and there will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation to the same time. And at that time, at that time, at that time, your people will be delivered who are they? Everyone who will be found in that book in the book who are written in the book of life where is that book do you think based upon the society that we have here that I could go write down who is going to make it into the heavenly society no never and if I take that up for myself I would be, be very very careful that I'm not struck because it can't happen I could write down who's going to come into this society, and you could write down who's going to come into this society, and any other society. The United States could write down who's going to come into this society, Japan could do the same thing. But they can't say who's going to be on high. That's not their job. And it's never going to be their job. Because that's already written in everyone. And when they come to the point that they allow enough light to come in, they will be awakened to that. They will have that. Okay. So. I don't want to get too far here now. I'm on, you know, I, 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 am, I got a, quite a bit more to go. And because of the fact that I got so much more to go, and at the same time, I'm running out of time, I'm going to go ahead and close it right there.